What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to combine multiple machine learning classifiers into one big classifier that is based on the democratic principle of voting. So let us get right into it. Alright, so for today's video, I'm going to use a Jupyter Notebook. I have mentioned in a lot of videos already why I think a Jupyter Notebook is the right development environment for machine learning and data science. The reason is we have individual code cells that we can run, which means that if we have trained, for example, five models already, and it took some time, we don't have to train them all over again, just to run the latest print statement that we added at the bottom of the code. Uh, however, all the code that I'm going to show you today will also be um, able to run in PyCharm in the Python idle and VS code, whatever, you don't need to have an IPython notebook in order to run the code. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do something called ensemble learning. So basically, we're going to combine multiple machine learning models into one big model. So let's say we have three classifiers that work on the same data, we have some input values, and then we have a prediction, which is the class, the output value. Um, and we have three independent models. So we have, for example, a K neighbors classifier, a support vector classifier, a decision tree, a random forest, maybe a neural network, whatever. We have some sort of classifiers and we have different classifiers. Now, all these classifiers are independently trained on the same data. For example, in our video, we're going to train them on the same data. And then we're going to have those models make predictions. Now, each model in and of itself will have its accuracy. So if we evaluate it on a test set, we're going to see, okay, one model has 90% accuracy, another one has 97% accuracy, another one 92% accuracy, whatever, shouldn't be too far apart, though. And the goal is now to take all these models and put them into one big model, we're going to use in particular, the voting classifier. So the idea is that all the models are going to make predictions on their own for uh, some input data. And then what we're going to do is we're going to ask each model, what do you think is the class of this input data? And then they're going to give a prediction. And of course, if all give the same prediction, we're going to just take that. Otherwise, we're going to take the majority vote. This is at least the principle called hard voting. Alternatively, we also have something called uh, soft voting, which is essentially the same thing, but we also take confidence into account. So for example, if we have two classifiers and one says, I think it's class A, the other one says, I think it's class B, but the first one is quite uncertain. He says maybe, okay, I think 51% class A, not 49% class B, and the other one says 100% class B. We're going to put more emphasis on that. So we're going to average the votes based on confidence as well. That's the basic idea of what we're going to do today. And for that, we're going to need two libraries. We're going to need sklearn um, and we're going to need matplotlib. And matplotlib is only going to be needed for one visualization. So actually the focus is on sklearn, scikit-learn. If you don't have it, you open up your command line and you type pip install sklearn or scikit-learn. Both should be the same. I think if you're using the conda environment, so if you use conda install, you're going to have to type scikit dash learn because it doesn't recognize sklearn. Same goes for matplotlib. But I think if you're watching that video, you already have those installed, or at least you know how to install them. So for the sample data in this video, we're going to use the make moons function. So we're going to say from sklearn dot data sets, we're going to import make moons. This is just a function that generates some uh, data that has a certain pattern, but it also has some randomness. And we're going to take a look at this data. So we're going to say moons equals make moons, we're going to generate 5000 moons, we're going to add some noise to them so that they're not completely perfect. And we're going to um, actually let's let's do that in the end, we're going to do it right now like that. And then I'm going to import here matplotlib matplotlib.pyplot SPLT, and then we're going to say x and y equals moons. Now moons zero is um, the feature. So the x and y coordinates and y is the class. So what we're going to do is we're going to say x is moon zero and y is um, moons one. <clears throat> but when we do the actual plotting, so PLT scatter, what we're going to do is we're going to take everything from the first column of the x uh, values because we have x and y coordinates. So the x and y coordinates are part of x and the label is part of y. So here in the x we have both coordinates. I hope this is not too confusing. And uh, as the color, we're going to choose the y values. 
So that's the basic idea. This is what the data looks like. Now, if we remove some noise, if we set this to 0 0.1, you're going to see the pattern more. If we remove noise completely, if we have zero, you're going to see that this is the function. This is the ideal way these, uh, these moons should be distributed. And the more noise you add, of course, the more you're going to see some differences. So this is already quite messy. And of course, if we increase that to 0 0.8, for example, uh, we're going to slowly lose the pattern, right? So we're going to go with 0 0.3. I think that's kind of fine. And now we want to train a couple of classifiers to take these coordinates and then predict, okay, what class the moon is. So we are looking for a decision boundary like that. Um, and we're going to just pick a couple of classifiers. You don't need to understand uh, how they work. But before we do that, we're going to split the data. So we're going to say from sklearn dot model selection, import the train test split. <clears throat> and we're going to say x train x test y train y test is going to be train test split x and y and a test size of 0 0.2. Now we have the, the test data here. So x uh, or the train data here x train y train, this is what we're going to train the models on and then we're going to see how well they perform on the x test. Now in practice, you would also go with a validation test. So you would again split the training data into a validation set into a training set and then you would train and hyper uh, do the hyperparameter tuning on the validation set or with the validation set. And then only when you're ready to run the model into production, you would use the test set. But for this video, we're going to do it like that. <clears throat> and the first thing that we want to do here is we want to say from sklearn dot SVM import SVC support vector classifier from sklearn dot uh, ensemble, we're going to import a random forest classifier. Now a random forest classifier is in and of itself already what we're doing today. But a random forest classifier is an ensemble of decision trees. So we combine decision trees, and um, that produces a forest, right? Um, we're going to use it here as an ordinary model. So we're not going to care about it being an ensemble model. This is just one of those models that we're going to use. Um, and we're going to also use a K neighbors classifier. So SK learn neighbors import K neighbors classifier, and you can add whatever you want, you're free to do that. Just keep in mind that the more different these models are behind the scenes, um, the more independence you're going to have and the higher, the better the result is going to be uh, in the ensemble in the final voting classifier. Because the basic idea of a voting classifier, and this is actually quite kind of interesting is that even if you have a ton of bad classifiers, the result might be quite good. An example for that is and this is the principle of the law of large numbers, I actually have a video on that. But the basic idea is that if you have a bunch of classifiers that perform a little bit better than guessing, let's say 51% accuracy or 52% accuracy, which is very, very bad. If you combine 10,000 of those, you will still have a pretty decent classifier. And the reason for that is or actually a very good classifier if they're completely independent, of course. And the reason for that is think about it as a coin flip. If you have a coin that produces, I don't know, one side 52 or 53% of the time, which is really not that much of a difference, right? But if you have such a coin and you flip it 10,000 times, the probability of this coin having this particular side, let's say it's hats, for example, having this particular side more often than the other one is almost 100% or at least it's a very high percentage, I don't know the exact percentage. So if you combine a lot of models that are independent, and quite good, or not quite good, quite bad, actually, but but better than guessing, you're still going to end up with a classifier that is very, very good, because the likelihood of the majority being wrong is very small, if they're independent. So the more independent the models are, the more different they are. And even if you train them on um, different data samples, that's even better. But the more different the models are, the better the result of the voting classifier will be in the end. So we're now going to say SVM CLF is going to be um, SVC, the kernel is going to be RBF, I think that's the, uh, the default. But uh, we're also going to set here the parameter probability equals true. Why do we do that? Now the idea behind that is I talked earlier about the soft voting because we have hard voting and soft voting hard voting just takes all the predictions and uh, takes the most common prediction. And soft voting takes the confidence the probability of this output being true into account. Now, by default, the support vector classifier doesn't have such uh, a probability uh, feature, it cannot give you the confidence, it just says yes or no. 
If we want to add that, and this does some stuff behind the scenes, I'm not going to go into it right now, but if you want to add the probability function to the SVC so that we can do soft voting later on, you have to set probability to true. And then we just say fit X train Y train. <clears throat> We're going to do now the same thing for the random forest classifier. So R and D classifier is going to be a random forest classifier with uh, n estimators being 100 and we're going to also set here n jobs equal to negative one now you don't need to do that but what this does is it takes all it uses all the uh, cpu cores that you have so if you leave this to the default value you're gonna use just a single core i think if you set this to negative one this will use all the cores available which means that if you have um, a multi-core cpu which which you probably have uh, this is going to speed up the process massively. So we're going to fit this also to X train Y train. And then we're going to say uh, K and N CLF is going to be a random forest, uh, not random forest, sorry, K neighbors classifier um, without hyperparameters and then fit X train Y train. Now the data set is quite small. So this is going to work. Uh, pretty fast. Of course, if you increase that number here, this is going to take some more time. Um, and now we can evaluate those. So we can say print SVM classifier score. And we want to score on the X test, Y test data. Now we'll copy that, change this to random classifier, change this to KNN classifier. And we can see that we have around 90% accuracy for most of them. And now what we want to do is we want to take all of those and combine them in one voting classifier. For that, what we do is we say from sklearn.ensemble import voting classifier. And now we can do something like voting CLF is equal to voting classifier. We pass a list and in that list we have some tuples with a name SVM CLF and SVM CLF. <clears throat> R&D CLF and R and D CLF and not this K and N CLF and K and N CLF. Now, if we want to specify manually, I think by default, it's hard voting. If you want to specify the voting, you can say voting equals either hard or soft. We're going to start with hard. Um, and once we have that, we can just say voting classifier fit X train and Y train, which will fit all these models and then have this voting classifier. Now, the important thing here is that you're not going to have necessarily always better performance. This is not guaranteed, especially not like that. If you if you put some more thought into it, you might increase the chances. But this is going to be quite random. First of all, we generate random data. Uh, we train a random forest after all, right? Um, so you're going to have different results every time you run this. And sometimes the best classifier of this collection will have a better result uh, than the whole voting classifier. But keep in mind, we have only three models and all that. Still, it's not guaranteed that you're going to get a better result. But overall, this is quite useful. And oftentimes you will get a better result. So let's see in this case, in this random case, if this actually performs better or worse. In this case, we get 908. So it's not the best one, the SVC performs better. But yeah, it it is quite, quite good. Now, one thing I prepared here is you can add to all these random functions, a random state, a random state is basically a seat that allows you to always have the same results. And if we do that, if we I have prepared a couple, I cherry picked a couple of random states here that produce uh, a scenario where we have actually a better voting classifier than the individual classifiers. So I'm going to just set these parameters just to show you that it can happen. Just so you believe me that there are cases in which it happens. Um, and I think it was like that. Yeah, there you go. So here we have 90.5%, uh, 91.1%, 91%. And here, this is 91.2%, which is a little bit better than the best classifier that we have here. Again, there are also more scenarios where this is even uh, better. And you can tweak the values, you can play around, we can remove the uh, random states here again, and just try to let me just do that here quickly, try to play around with different values and see uh, different classifiers, different hyperparameters and see when better uh, results are produced. So for example, I can try to 
go with 10,000 samples and I can increase the noise. And then we can see if certain models perform better or if the whole thing performs better. Um, yeah, so you can play around with that if you want to. In this case, we have uh, the voting classifier being better than the last two and the first one is still better. So if you notice, for example, that one classifier in your voting classifier um, is always better than the other ones or if one is always worse than the other ones, you can remove that because if you have, for example, here, uh, a fourth classifier, which is a random classifier, and it just guesses all the time, this is going to drag down a whole voting classifier, especially if you have a hard voting mode. Now, if we change this to soft here, uh, we can see that this will change the result, not necessarily always to the better, sometimes to the better, sometimes not. I'm not even sure if this changed anything right now here. But uh, especially if you have multiple classes here, we only have two classes and many, many features, this can be quite useful. Um, and all in all, this is a technique that is definitely used in practice. So in data science, it makes sense, again, due to the large, uh, law of large numbers, even if you have a 1000 classifiers that have 51% accuracy, provided they're, that they're theoretically completely uh, independent from each other, they will produce a pretty, pretty good classifier in the end. Because again, if you flip a coin that gives you 51% of the time heads, and if you flip that coin a million times, you will have more heads than tails. And if your prediction is then heads, because you flip them, if those are all classifiers, you're going to have heads in the end result, if you aggregate all the results. That's the idea here. I hope this is not too complex to understand. But that is the idea behind voting classifiers. And that is the idea. Uh, and this is how you do that in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button, and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video. And